Welcome back to this week's segment of Building the Coaling Tower. We're going to get jump right into this and get started. We'll see how far we can get this week, so stay tuned. All right, so we are going to continue on with this build. Uh, you know, I've still got a bunch of directions I can take with this build this week. There's still a whole bunch of different things to work on. I do need to put the rigging, you know, the ropes and cables on that coaling chute assembly that I did last week. And that's kind of my number one priority. But, you know, there's still some stuff underneath. And I said I was going to finish all that before I moved on. Now I've done all this stuff around the outside of the building. But, you know, I never did go back and all those uh, hanging weights underneath there's a couple of them that hang just a little bit too low so I want to cut them off and raise them up even with the others and then all the weights on the end of those remember those are glass beads and they're just really really shiny which the steel weights that were on these would have definitely been dull and maybe even a little rusted you know so I need to tone all those down with some flat back paint and maybe do some little weathering on them and you know, I had put one of the uh, pull downs on the ends of the chutes to show you at one time, but I've still got the other four of those made, and I need to glue those on the rest of those coaling chutes underneath. So I'm going to do some of that underneath and try to get it finished so I don't have to go back underneath this thing again because it's just going to have so much of this tedious little detail on the outside that's turned upside down. You can see by now I'm going to be damaging something, I'm sure, and going back and rebuilding. So let's jump into this and you know, see what all we can get into and accomplish in this video. This is number eight in the series. You know, we're getting up there. Let's, uh, let's just go with this. All right, so we are going to continue on with the coaling chutes and, you know, all the assemblies on this side. There's a whole lot of rigging that has to be done on this side. And then there's all these platforms that go in between each of the coaling chutes. You know, in my previous video, I had mentioned that, you know, it's really hard to decipher the cables and everything on this. So I'm just going to try to make up some way that it looks like it would have worked. But to begin with, we're going to go ahead and work on all those platforms. And there's basically four separate platforms. There's two that go in between the chutes and then two on either ends. And I go through all my bags of handrails and stuff and... You know, I really didn't find stuff for the handrails pre-made, so we'll go into that in a minute. But I did go through my Tichy platforms and I drug out all this open grate and measured in between each one of those cooling chutes and decided these are the sizes that I needed in length. Now I'm going to go ahead and wrap some plastic around the outsides of these. The back side, I need a bigger piece of plastic so that I can glue it to the concrete wall because there's just not much back there for adhesion. So I come through and glue all these on the back side. And all, you know, the lengths of these, there's not a support out on the very end of some of this open grate. So on those open ends where the grate extends past the support underneath, I'm going to go ahead and cut some more supports to support the very end of that grate because it would not have just, you know, stuck out there in midair. So I come back and cut those and, you know, I had to cut little squares out of the corners of them to get them to sit down in the gray uh, front and back, uh, you know, styrene as it was. But then I glued those into place and I'm going to come up... It, to glue the handrails on the front of these, I'm also going to have to put a little more plastic on the front of those. So just like that piece I put on the back, I'm going to add this one to the front as well to give me more area to glue the handrail, handrail stanchions onto. And once that's done, you know, the ends... Even though I add those supports underneath, there's two ends which the handrails actually go around the corner. So I'm just adding these last two pieces on there to get good glue on those as well. And then I come through and cut all my stanchions. And you know, I'm cutting them just a little over three foot because they do overlap that plastic down below. And each, each the long pieces of these get three on the front sides and the other one gets two on the front side. So I find the center point of all these and go ahead and glue the center one into position. Then I just come back and add all these, you know, one at a time on each of those supports because I only have so many of these, 
you know, tweezers that are made to hold things permanently. And, you know, I just come through and add all those on there. And the two on the ends, I add the ones that return off the back to enclose the end of the platform as well. And then I have the stanchions glued into place. And then to glue the top rails on, you know, these aren't perfectly even. So I'm just laying this, uh, anything I can find on there to get the handrails even. And then I come through and glue the top rail on all of the handrails. And that's the top rail except for the returns on either end in place and glued down. And every time I glue a new piece on these, you know, I re-glue all the old pieces because this is just very, very, you know, fine stuff and it is not much there for glue. But then I come back and start putting the center pieces in as well. And the top pieces on the end and then the center pieces on the end as well. And I have all the handrails basically done on the assembly at that point. Now there is one I see missing on this end piece. I came back and glued that in as well. I kind of got them ahead of myself and happy with myself because I thought I was done and realized I was missing one more piece. So here we're just gluing that last piece into place. And I just keep going back and adding a little more glue as everything dries again and again and again to each of these points just to make sure that there's good adhesion there because you really can't even hardly pick these up by hand and, and you know not have something break it's so fragile. And then I come back and put black paint on that and it, they, you know, basically they're ready to mount onto the wall. The one thing I'm worried about getting into before I mount those to the wall is some of this rigging that's closest to the tower itself. I'm afraid if I glue the handrails into place, you know, I won't be able to get into and work on all of the, the cables that make this whole thing work. And I'm going to start with the cables that just raise and lower the chute that allows the coal to come down in. And the basic chute on the front has one cable that comes up to that assembly and then goes down to an eye hook. So I'm just going to cut the three pieces of those. And here you see I'm just starting to glue one on the front of each of those coaling chutes and taking it up through the eyelet. And you know, I just did this to glue them into place because that eyelet is not the right place that these actually go through on the assembly. That pulley on the back side is where they actually go through, but this one on the front just kept them, you know, pretty much in an upright position while the glue dried. Now to terminate these, there would have been an eyelet, and I can't tell in the photograph exactly where the eyelet was that these, you know, really went to. So I'm coming back here with my drill, and I'm just going to drill a hole in the concrete right above the chute so all this cable can go there and be terminated right at that eyelet back there on the back. And that's the first part of the cable in place. It go, comes from the chute to the pulley and back there. Now the other side of that little assembly above would have had a cable that came down to the coaling chute. And that would have made, the as the chute lowered, it would have lowered that assembly which pulled the cable behind up, which pulled the coaling chute up. So, yeah, you know, I'm not sure how this exactly worked, but there's one cable that came down from that eyelet to two cables which came down to either side of the coaling chute. So I'm just making these little squares and drilling a hole in it to put my thread through. And, you know, above that little piece of plastic, there's going to be a single piece of thread. And below that is going to be a double piece of thread. And I just come back and start gluing that together where those cables meet, at, at, you know, and form a junction point, basically, and get all three of those set up. And it's kind of hard to see the double thread side on the one side of these, but one side of this white piece has one thread and the other side has two. Now this, you know, terminated at this eyelet up above. So I just go through and I glue the single side of that uh, thread through those eyelets up above and glue them into place. And then the lower side came down to those two eyelets that I glued to either side of the chute. And that whole assembly would have been what raised and lowered the cold door itself. And you know, I went ahead after I glued them in place and then tied them off and then re-glued it again and then came back and cut all the ends off of all of those things. 
Now that that's in place, I can probably go ahead and get the uh, platforms mounted. And the other thing I needed for this, and you can see here I'm measuring before I ever made the platforms, but there was 45 degree supports underneath those platforms, which came down and met the concrete wall, so that, you know, the backside wasn't the only thing attached to the wall. It had some center supports out in front. And all the long ones would have needed three supports, and that end one would have needed two supports. And I just took some flat stock here and cut it to that length that I had measured and cut 45s on either end of them. Then I cut some little square plates that would have mounted to the wall and to the platform underneath. And I come back and just, you know, put the, the flat stock as a set right in the center of each of those squares and glue those into place. I do one end of all of them first to make sure that was set up really good and glued it a second time. Then I came back and did the second side on all of those and created all these supports that will go underneath all of those platforms when I mount them to the wall. And you know, it's just time consuming, nothing hard about any of this. And then I'm going to take them outside. I tape them down to this board and I'm going to take them outside and rattle can them and put some black paint on them like I paint everything else to get those ready to mount. And once I bring them back in, I need to scratch the, uh, in the flat plates where they meet and glue the, get the paint off of all of those. So I just come back and clean off all the bottom sides of those flat plates. And then I super glue them onto the platforms. I'm going to do this first and then mount the whole unit onto the wall as a whole. You know, coming back and looking at these, once I did these, this side that meets the walls, the angles and everything were just a very slight bit off on these. So rather than fight with them when I put them on the wall, I'm just going to come back and and cut the ends of those off and put new platforms on these ends. So I just cut all those off at the right angle. Yeah, I probably should have waited to the end to do this, but I didn't. You know, so I'm coming back and just, you know, making it up as I go along, basically. But then I come back and put black paint on these, and they're ready to mount onto the structure. So I just come back one at a time and start mounting those in between the culling chutes and on either end, and I have the platforms mounted in place. One more thing out of the way, and uh, you know, it looks fairly good, really. And there you have this week's segment of building the culling tower. You know, we did a fair amount of work this week. I'm still trying to get stuff done in the nursery. It looks like right now major storms are moving in. Of course, you guys won't see this for a week or so, but uh, you know, maybe next week and a few weeks down the road for you guys, I'll have more time to get more accomplished on this. I'd like to get this building finished. I've got some other buildings I'm really interested in getting it started on. So in any case, uh, thank you for coming back and sharing this time with me. I do appreciate it. And, uh, you know, hopefully you can learn something from some of the mistakes and the things that I do. Uh, if nothing else, maybe you can figure a better way of doing things. Uh, you know, it's all about just dragging out some materials and scratch building. I say that in every video and I'm going to continue saying it because it's not that hard. Just jump out there and build something and learn and enjoy the hobby. Happy model railroading.